Wizards of the Coast may be able to go back to their shareholders in Q4 and just give the joyous news that the Marvel Secret Layers were a sellout success in just a mere few hours. But how will that conversation turn for the company six months from now when they find out they've shed a lot of their players? to proxying companies making fake magic cards. In today's video, we are going to discuss this difficult subject for a lot of people out there. Should they save money proxying cards or should they keep buying the real thing? I wonder what side of the fence most players are gonna find themselves on in today's video. Now, before I start today's video, a reminder, I am no expert on legal law. I have no idea about the legalities of all these cards, only the things I've heard. That means in my conversation today, I'm likely going to get some stuff wrong. You can correct me in the comment section, have at it. But the conversation around proxy magic cards, it's really heating up. And I just want to put a two cents in there and talk about what I'm hearing from other players, other sources, including stores, about how they deal with proxying and if it's going to be a real issue going forward. Welcome back, guys. MTG Moxman here. And thank you again for hanging out with me on my channel today. Now, at the beginning of this video, I'm going to make it clear. I fall on the side of buying the real card. Even though some of them are ridiculously expensive, there are reasons why I think you should buy the real thing. I will get to that in the second half of this video. On the other side here, I will tell you I have proxied cards before. When I first got back into Magic and I didn't have all these cards, I had to create some of these cards and we either wrote on top of an actual old piece of land on Magic and eventually we printed off really cheap ones on a black and white printer and we just kind of put the abilities on there and that was that. Now I understand nowadays people can get these things really ripped up looking very amazing. I've seen lots of proxies in my day and me and my play group do not stop people from playing with proxies, but that doesn't mean everyone will. So let's, let's dive into this together. Let's get the conversation started and see where we end up by the end of this video. Now, I've gotten stuff out of the way. I'm on the side of do not proxy magic cards, but we all know for a fact now that I have proxied in the past when I first came back to Magic the Gathering. So let's talk about the reasons why you would proxy. The Marvel Secret Layer and the fact they sold out and I heard about all the trick ways now that people got in past the queue and got their stuff right away and didn't have to wait in line. And I can understand how upset so many players are. Also, the fact that these things ended up on the secondary market for four or five X their money means a lot of players said, forget this, I'm done. I'm just going to go print this stuff off. I can print off an entire couple of commander decks, all kinds of regular decks, and it's going to cost me like 200 bucks. Okay? Granted, cheap and affordable compared to regular Magic the Gathering cards. You can just play these things. You can just get them delivered to your house. You send your list off. They take care of it. And boom. And I know a lot of them look really good. I mean, they won't pass the tests of being a Magic card. I get all that. But the fact you can get cool art on them, get the cards you need, and be able to play with them right away, that's a pretty good incentive, isn't it? Not to mention you're saving a lot of money. So we already have fast, affordable, ease of use. Those are all really good pros, aren't they? They all stand up the sniff test. And you say, why would I not do this? Because I look at that myself, and I know friends right now who still proxy, mainly because they can't afford to buy the real card, or... They believe that Wizards of the Coast has become so twisted in their printing and reprinting methods that it makes no sense to buy any new set of any card that's expensive. Yeah, they still crack packs for fun. They're still contributing to the economy of Magic the Gathering. But when it comes to expensive cards like a Shieldred, a Ragavan, Orcish Bowmaster, they don't care. They'll go out and just get a proxy, print it up, and have it delivered to the house. Now, I know for my friends out there and people I talk to, the most annoying thing is when people... Instead of being a proxy, they're trying to create a counterfeit. The difference being, a proxy card will not look like the original Magic card. It'll just have some cool art on it, maybe some really glossed image, maybe some crazy foiling on it, but it won't look like the original. A counterfeit will try to look like the exact original card to make you think you got something cool and it's sleeved up and people can't tell you like, yeah, I got the real deal, bro. Look at this thing. It's a Black Lotus. I understand. So that's the most annoying thing that I've heard from stores and players. Because eventually, by accident or by intention, some of these cards can end up 
mixed in with your regular cards and at some point you may even forget you had it you say yeah that's my dual lands and then when you're trading in five or six dual lands it turns out two of them are proxies because you forgot and that's not a good thing so it's always better to make your proxies not look like the original don't try to counterfeit it try to make it an actual proxy now again i'm not a legal expert i have no idea about the legalities of it i'm not a lawyer but when i looked at how expensive some of these cards are and the frustration from players and you can see the subreddit boards, the conversations, the emails I got. And when I checked in with local stores, some of these stores are dead set against proxies. Other stores don't care at all. So you will find yourselves faced off with one end of the spectrum or the other, and maybe somewhere in between, which are the stores that will let you proxy for just general gameplay, but not in tournaments, of course. You're not going to have some fake cards in a tournament, nothing sanctioned by Wizards of the Coast, or in most cases, just a big store event. They want you to have the real deal. Although I know some stores, you can, if you have an expensive card, let's say like a Mox Diamond, you can have it beside you, or in a binder, or somehow outside the deck, so you don't want to get scuffed up or wrecked. And you can have a proxy inside the deck as long as you can prove you have the real card and people are well aware you just don't want to damage the original copy i understand all that and a lot of those players out there do that regularly so that's all the pros and there's a lot of pros there isn't it cheap affordable ease of use and the fact you're not going to worry about damaging them because they're not super expensive cards now i want to flip this now we're about five minutes into this video i want to flip it to the other side of the spectrum why you should buy the real card and it's a much shorter list, by the way. You'll notice that as we go through the video. If you don't support the LGS and you only proxy cards, LGS is closed down without store support. Without you spending money on cards or buying other products from that store, your local hangout spot can disappear in the blink of an eye. And I already know what's happened because I contacted a whole bunch of closed stores to get information. Now, I'll be honest, only two of them said proxying was a real issue. But five more said proxying did contribute to the downfall of their store. So it can be an issue for stores if they don't have enough support. If you're just going there to hang out, you get to use their Wi-Fi. You get to sit at their tables. You get to spend five or six hours playing with your friend, but you contributed nothing back to the local store that is keeping the lights on and paying staff to be there for you to be able to enjoy that game. That's a hard nut to swallow. Now, if you are supporting that store, if you're buying product there, even if it's random packs, you're, 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 you're enjoying yourself, but at the same time, you understand that things aren't free. You can't just walk in and use you know, a lot of bathrooms back in the day. You had to buy something at that store to use that bathroom. That's what we're getting at, okay? You're supporting the store. Now, when you think of a company like Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, you feel that you are like Robin Hood. I'm giving it to the man I am taking back what's mine and I am enjoying the card game the way I want to. And I can do that. No problem. And yeah, you can. But if they see too much revenue drop, if a true large amount of players dropped off the face of the earth and became proxy players only, and this has happened in the past to other card games that saw a drop off of players or not a large enough player base, the game gets mothballed and it disappears. Now, it seems like that's impossible, impossible to happen to Magic the Gathering is what most people think, but it can happen to anyone. It just doesn't happen overnight. It happens over time as more and more people go out there and start proxying cards instead of supporting the newest set, the newest design, the newest pre-release, the newest high priced Magic card set. And yes, you could say this is Wizards of the Coast fault. They did it to themselves. They didn't give us enough secret layers. They didn't, they didn't make sure the queue was properly. They didn't make sure the sets were properly priced. They were overpriced. I'm done. And I understand that side of that argument. I absolutely do. And I empathize. And I just feel a lot of people got the raw end of the stick on that one. It's horrible. But this is one of the reasons why I fall on the side of supporting buying magic cards it is more expensive for me and it makes it difficult i have to buy a lot less cards because it costs more to buy them and all those things are horrible and, and they're and they're awful but i love the game i don't want it to ever go away and i also love supporting my lgs's that i visit weekly in most cases and you get to know the people that work there and they get to know you 
So for those reasons, that's why I tend to do it. And yes, it's horrible sometimes. And I get mad because Wizards of the Coast raises prices. How many videos do I have talking to you guys about how upset I am? And this secret layer thing is awful. It, it is horrible what's happened. And it's probably going to happen again. And when I saw the subreddit groups and it was brought to my attention, three, 4,000 people making comments and upvotes and all this stuff, that's three or 4,000 people not buying Magic cards. It may not seem like a huge ton, but out of all the cards they would have bought, and yes, I understand some of these players can't afford the Magic cards. I do get that side. Remember, we go to the first part, ease and affordability. You may not have the money to buy a deck of Shieldred and have four Shieldreds in your deck. Maybe you can't have four Orcish Bowmasters, right? And I understand that. But I think if it goes on mass and then people kept expanding and growing it in that direction, you may see some nasty side effects that you did not expect. Either Wizards of the Coast really cracks down on things, which I don't think they'll do right away, but you never know. We can't, we can't predict the future. More LGS is closed, leaving us less options of places to play at. And we all say, I wonder why they closed. It was always busy in there. How many times have I heard that in the last couple of years? And then there's also the side effect. You get very polarized playgroups that say, you can't play with us. You don't have real cards. Sorry, man. Now, I've seen some pods and playgroups like that already. They're very small. They're not big, huge, diverse crowds. And we would never do it in our playgroup. We just want to play and have a good time. But I do understand how some groups can get that way. I spend hard-earned money to buy my cards. You spent pennies on the dollar, which seems like a subclass system, which is very unfair as well when you're just trying to enjoy a game. It's not like Monopoly costs 50 to 100 bucks every time you play it, right? Or every time you buy an expansion pack or you have missing dollars and missing pieces and you buy them, it's like 15 bucks. I understand. I get it. And that's why I find this topic so difficult because you can fall on both sides of the fence almost at the same time. And you sit there going, well, I know why it's this way and I know why it's this way. And I don't know if there's even an answer to the question that suits everyone. And I don't know how many people are going to watch this video and think he's not even choosing a side. But remember the beginning, I choose the side of buying the cards, but I empathize and understand because I've done the other side. Especially when I was just starting out in my career and I couldn't afford any cards. I'd come back and I had old school stuff I didn't want to give up, but I wanted to get some of the new things like Planeswalkers and stuff. And we just printed, printed off some black and white copies. So I could get started again and get the idea of what was going on and then slowly purchase the cards back, which is why me and my friends allow proxies because if that player wants to get in and actually collect the game, they can slowly build up their collections, buying one card at a time, maybe slowly get a better job or whatever happens in their lives and they become more expansive with their collections. It's great. It's amazing to own the real thing, but it's not for everyone. And some players just want to play and enjoy the game. So I think as I ramble on here, I think if I get to the end here and I say to myself, if players do it because they can't afford it, I understand. If players do it because they're mad at Wizards of the Coast, I understand. If players do it because it's just too expensive and the price point is getting out of hand, I understand. I do. And that's why players are going to keep doing it. Because there's enough people out there who are just saying, this is the way it's going to be. Because there's no way I'm going to, play, I'm going to pay for it. But all those other side effects, those side effects could happen and you just don't notice it right away. So keep that in mind as well. Every choice has a consequence. And those consequences, pros and cons, have to be weighed. It brings me back to, to the days when people would um, copy uh, illegal movies off of things like LimeWire and FrostWire back in the day. And I remember a co-worker getting that, uh, that fine for $50,000 and like went to court and everything. He lost. It's crazy. Did he lose? Maybe he didn't lose. Maybe he just got warnings. Because I don't remember him actually paying any money. I have to check in with that one to make sure that story is valid. I remember he went to court. Check in with me at the live stream on Sunday, and I'll see if I checked in with him at that point. Because I don't know actually what happened. Maybe he just got the got the warning things at the end from the court. We'll find out. Because um, I'm now curious myself. But that kind of stuff, like pirating stuff like that, has a consequence. Okay? Everything does. Everything. It just depends on what side. Now, I want to know, though. Here we are at the end. I'm curious to know what you guys think about this. Would you proxy? Would you not proxy? Would you proxy in certain circumstances? Are you just so mad that you don't care anymore? You just want to play the game and have a good time. Guys, it's a crazy topic to try to cover to make sure it suits everyone. But when you try to please everyone, you please no one. I think that's why I finally just said, I'm not going to proxy anything anymore. I'll just save up and buy the cards because I want the real deal. And I've been playing the game a long time and I want to support what goes on with this game for the long period, for the next generations coming up, like my son and his friends. Being grade 8 playing Magic, they have a lot of 
bum cards I've given them. Nothing really expensive except for my son, Minimox, having some, some nice cards that people here on the channel helped him buy. But I look at that and say, I want that generation to be able to enjoy the game. And I want them to know what it feels like to have a cool card that they've earned and worked up to. And I think that's, that's why I fall on that side of, yeah, buy the real deal. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. Drop some comments in the comment section. I hope you guys enjoyed today's content. And of course, we'll be back tomorrow with another video. Have an awesome day, everyone. To proxy or not to proxy. Hi everyone and welcome back. MTG Moxman here and thank you again for hanging out with me on my channel today. The end of the video here is always a special shout out and thank you to the fantastic patrons of my channel. Without the supporters and people on my Patreon, daily upload of content, it just would never happen. So I put these out here every single day. So to all my patrons out there who are watching every day, thumbs up, helping support the channel. Thanks again for being there for the channel. Thanks for allowing us to explore interesting topics and crazy stuff in the world of Magic the Gathering. Well, 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 we're here at the end of the video. You've made it to the Ramble Jamble section. Ramble in the Jamble! So, um, there's a lot of angry players out there at Wizards of the Coast. And the proxy conversation comes up almost every time. And, I, I, you know, you see it in the comment sections of videos. Oh, everyone should, everyone should just be proxying. And there are those players out there who will toot the horn of the proxy. And they will say it's the best thing since sliced bread. And for all I know, they could be totally right and I'm getting ripped off. But at the same time, I still buy the real card. I buy what I want. I won't be influenced by other people. Always have that nugget, that uh, cynical side of you, that tells you to listen to yourself. Gather as much information as you can to make an educated choice based on what you hear around you. But same as I'm not the be-all, end-all on content creation and facts, nobody else is either. You take every little bit you can and come up with the best, the best choice that fits your personal moral code of how you do things. And my code has changed over the years. I know it has, and many other people have as well. Same as channels evolve and change. And this proxy conversation, when I reached out to stores and I reached out to people, there's a lot of angry people right now at that secret layer. And it's just like icing on the cake because this has happened a few times and there's always a group that are gonna be very unsatisfied and, and talk about everyone should be proxying. But have you noticed, there'll be the diehard people out there, the diehards, Right, the, the McLeans, who just say, no, man, I'm going to do things myself. I don't need shoes. I don't need socks. I can save the world on Christmas. I can make it happen for myself. And I'll make my own choices. Thanks. yippee ki -yay. You know what I'm saying, right? So there's others, though, who will try to get you to drink the Kool-Aid. Join in the cult of the proxy. And I, again, I empathize because I understand. There's guys in our playgroups who are on disability. They don't have any money, so they proxy. And they just want the experience of playing. And I don't want to take that away from them. I don't want them to have to miss out just because they can't buy a super expensive card to be able to experience and try some crazy deck. I wouldn't want them to miss out anyway. But if too many people go to that other side, if too many things become an issue, Wizards of the Coast will step in. They will fortify the rules. They can make things difficult. I'm sure they got enough lawyers and things that if they have to start cracking down, they will. And again, choices have consequences in the end. So I'll be curious to see how it all plays out. I'll see what people say in the comment section. I wonder if this video will even crack three or 4,000 views. It may not get anything. It may be one of those videos that like dies on the vine, but I'm hoping it goes somewhere because it is an important topic. And I just think it's one of those things we should discuss now while the iron, again, the iron is hot and people are talking about it constantly. So we'll see what happens. Guys, thanks again for hanging out. Thanks for being here. The ramble and the jam is brought to you by, yeah, I know, it's brought to you by you guys. All right, I'll see you soon. Turn the lights off. It's late, man. Save the energy. I gotta buy more magic cards. Which, but, no, I'm not gonna say that. Nope, nope, don't say that.